Welcome to the Special Delivery Damn Near Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Special. This episode is going to be what you don't know and what you should know about Jay Lately's Be Fucking Happy. And I got Jay Lately right here. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm very excited about this. I got to listen to, you know, an exclusive copy of the project. So now we're going to give an exclusive copy to the people. Yeah. I'm so excited. I love the title because it's, of course, it's Be Fucking Happy, but it's also such a good message about you telling yourself to be happy you got all this shit going on in your life good and bad but mostly good so why not be happy what was the journey like to this album title yeah um i mean that's what exactly what it is it's a message to myself like Mm -hmm. the whole thing is speaking to myself um and it wasn't like an album title that i knew going into writing the songs it was something that really came out of the process like the songs that I'm writing on this album aren't things like, it's not stuff I knew ahead of time that I wanted to share with people. Mm-hmm. It's more stuff that just like came out of me. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of like realized, I figured it out along the way too. So it was like really a process of the things I'm speaking about are like, it's because I was learning them while I was writing them. That was actually going to be one of my questions too, because I know when I go through like, because this album talks a lot about like depression, anxiety, and just different emotions that you go through. Mm -hmm. I know when I get depressed, there's this kind of like moment of clarity afterwards, and then everything makes sense. So I was actually going to ask you, when you were writing these songs, were they more like during the actual depression and anxiety or afterwards when you kind of reflected on it? Definitely during for parts Mm -hmm. of it. Um, But also, I don't know, it's kind of like, I've I've said the the more that I uh, give myself to this music, the more my life goes like up and down. Mm-hmm. And so like one day I can be in the middle of the depression, and the next day I can be on top of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was definitely during both kind of you know what I mean. And it was figuring out. I think though through the process, it definitely like led me to a better place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Um, and and that was definitely like relieving. It was mm-hmm. it was it's kind of nice to like show yourself that you're still in control of yourself Mm -hmm. so like when you are struggling it's a real relieving feeling to like be able to kind of like pull yourself out of that and you're like yeah okay next time i get there like i'm gonna be able to pull myself out again you know no that's definitely like what that clarity does it's like okay we've been to a dark place before remember we got out of that we can get out of this like that's really what it's about and even like i'll like make lists like okay next time i'm feeling really down do this do that like yeah talking yourself through it and that's what this project is is talking yourself through those problems yeah i mean it's it kind of is like really figuring out like what are those elements of my life that keep me happy Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and and like noticing those taking note of them and trying to add more of them and appreciate the ones that are here more and and focus on them you know i feel like there's a certain like part in the album to where it just becomes a whole lot of truth and a whole lot of heaviness like right there in the (laughs) middle so what was it like writing those really really honest songs almost like easier than the other ones Mm -hmm. to tell you the truth you know what i mean like it's like those ones where I'm not thinking about how it's going to be interpreted by somebody else, but mm-hmm. it's just like flowing out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are the ones that end up to be the most like kind of like bearing your soul because mm-hmm. you're not even thinking. It's like really honestly like a therapeutic process or like a diary process where it's just like even if this song doesn't come out, like it's good that I just made this song or it's good that I just wrote these things down. You know what I mean? And then in the end, if it's a good song, you're like, wow, mm-hmm. like think people are actually gonna like take to this you know what i mean and then there's always certain things where you're like dang i don't know if i really want the you know like that out there yeah, what i just said right there for real. but there were a number of times on this album where it was like certain things that just i wrote and then thinking about it i was like dang i don't i don't know if mm-hmm. i really want to say all that but i just i don't know it's too weird to change it mm-hmm. like it felt really weird to go back and like change certain things just because i felt uncomfortable about them being out there, you know. That makes sense. Remind me the name of the song with Space Cadet and Beejus. That one's called Anxious. Anxious. Yeah. Now, oh, I have so many questions. About that <laughs> First off, though, on the same level as talking about like truth and honesty, I know that they're super good friends of yours, but the way they got super honest on that track as well was crazy. You have Space Cadet talking about, oh, well, 
you know, I used to want the groupies to fuck me. Now I just want their money. Yeah. And then you got beat <laughs> on top of a bunch of other things. And then you got BJ's talking about like, oh, you think I'm on because I got these placements, but I pay for those. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, I was kind of shocked when I heard that from, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, it was tight. Yeah, I think. Because that was a song where I did my part first. Mm -hmm. Like, the minute I heard that beat, I started writing to it. I wrote the hook. I wrote my verse. And I was like, I, I need these these two dudes on here. Show, still doing those rounded, but I've been jumpy. jumpy. Thankful, but I've been grumpy. Uh, used to want these fangirls to fuck me, but now all I want is their money. Used to take shit, now I only take shits. Used to make shit, now I only make hits. See, the thing is, I don't get complacent. Probably need to take a break, but don't know where the breaks is. Guess I'm just anxious. There's a reason I wanted both of them on it, because I think we all, like, completely relate to what the theme of that song is, you know what I mean? Uh, and it was really sick for me, because I think we're really all on the same subject, but everyone, like, approached it in a very different way. Mm -hmm. Everyone, like, did it like themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I hear 100% Space Cadet in Space's verse. I hear 100% Bee just in his verse. So mm -hmm. it was just, like, a real genuine, you know, song. Now, this album posed a very interesting question that I had never thought of before. So now I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. Saint Lunatics <laughs> or Loonies? I would never even put them in the same category. Hardy prepaid percentage shit, all these toys and tuna fish. I'm going crazy, maybe join the loonies of Saint Lunatics. Been on the road from like noon to six. I've been on the shits from like two to one. I don't bother you on how So if you had to choose one to join, <laughs> what would it be? Man, being from the Bay Area, I gotta say the loonies, of course. And, like, you know what I mean? You could have your hand... Like, if if I had got to be in one of those two groups during their heyday, yeah. like, you get to have a hand in one of the biggest classics weed-smoking songs of all time. You know what I mean? Like, that's a that's a classic to me. It's For easy. Sure. But shout out to all... I have, like, a little group of friends who were, like, obsessed with the St. Lunatics. Like, yeah. we can listen to the whole album front to back. That's my shit. They were actually... Pretty good. They were huge. Yeah. And they were great. And you have a mascot, like a real... Well, well the Loonies have a mascot, too. For That's real? crazy. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, if you ever see him perform, like, they have this dude... I think he's in, like, a condom costume? <laughs> I'll show you pictures. It's crazy. Like, yeah. So, yeah, shout out to the Loonies and the St. Yeah, Lunatics for definitely. both having mascots and making incredible music. Yeah, for sure. Now, speaking of lines... What do you think is the sleeper line on this project that might go over people's heads, might Ooh. not be recognized? Um, I don't think it's going to necessarily go over people's heads because it's such a simple line, but that's what I like. Like, it, It's literally just the first line on the project. It starts with, I deserve a lifetime supply of peanut butter jellies. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like... It kind of that too like really represents where I'm at on this project because it's like accepting the fact that like, yeah, on tour, I eat hella peanut butter and jellies because I'm not getting paid enough to be eating fancy-ass food on the road. But it's, like, celebrating that. Like, I'm happy. Like, I get to be on fucking tour. You know what I mean? So, like, it's such a simple line, but I think it really, like, kind of captures, like, taking the enjoyment in, like, the journey. You know what I mean? Like, too often I sit there and think about, like, the steak dinner. You know what I mean? What about those? I had some great ass peanut butter and jelly sandwiches you know, with some great people in awesome places on the sides of rivers, like, you know what I mean? By waterfalls, like, all this stuff. For real. Steak dinners usually only happen in bougie ass restaurants. <laughs> exactly. Like, they don't happen on sides of rivers with dope people. But I think it's also very, very evolutionary of you because. You have a project called PB and J's that was years. That's true. It feels like it was so long ago. But it was, it kind of was. was like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It, feel, it feels it feels super long. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. But yeah, it's evolutionary because you have the PB and J's album too. So it's like this is yeah. nothing new. I honestly didn't even think about that when I was writing. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, I mean, it's like you know, it's prophecy. I, I haven't been lying. No. PB and J's. When I made that album, I was eating peanut butter and jellies. No. What up, Skippy? What up, Welches? <laughs> Sponsor this Sponsorship, guy. Sponsorship, yeah. What are we yeah, doing? For real, I'll put it on for you hard. I already do. <laughs> Wait, I might have asked you this when we did that interview, but just in case I didn't, crunchy or smooth peanut butter? You did ask me this, okay. and I said crunchy. Okay, did sure. we talk about jelly? I don't think we did. Okay, grape, strawberry? I prefer non-grape. to t Like, I prefer a berry. Okay. Like, my favorite is a nice, like blueberry or like Whoa. blackberry or like boysenberry or something okay just because i'm so used to tasting artificial grape and artificial strawberry mm -hmm. like i feel like we get those all the time so those other jellies are better but uh 
you know, when we're roughing it on the road, what I do is get the mixed uh, container mm -hmm. where it's like already together in one. Just mm -hmm. to keep it, you know, because it gets messy when you're like making all this. Keep, I mean, so scratch <laughs> Welch's, somebody's grandma out there who makes jams yeah. sponsor this guy. Yeah. I don't even know. I'm all about that. Now, you've made, honestly, a plethora of projects. You are very quick to do a project at least a year, maybe two projects a year. Was there any first that you encountered with this project? Yeah, for sure. Um, this is, I think, the first time where I really trusted other people a little bit more than I have in the past. Mm -hmm. um, trusting the other people who are involved in the creative process with me. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because I've worked with some of these people a little bit more. Like, for instance, Space Cadet produced uh, more than half of this album. Yep. Shout out to and him, man. he produced my, half of my last album, too. Mm -hmm. But on my last album, it was very much me sitting there in the studio with him, like, yo, make this type of beat, use mm -hmm. this sample, add, no, change the drums like that, and really hands-on. And this one, I think I allowed him more to kind of, like, experiment with what he thought I should be doing mm -hmm. and bring his piece to the puzzle, which was really cool. And just in terms of the artistic direction, working with some of the people that I've worked with, so... That was definitely a good process for me because I think part of this album for me has been learning how to, like, get out of my own way. Mm -hmm. I can be, like, sometimes over-controlling or over-analytical of what I'm doing, overthink things, mm -hmm. and just hold myself back because of that. And so this was really, you know, that was cool to, like, experience it go successfully when I, like, took my hands off a little bit and let things just kind of flow naturally. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool to, like, feel like it worked. <laughs> that shit is so scary. So, yeah, for it yeah, to work, super it's scary. so dope. You know this, too, with your with your passion behind this. Like, it's the type of thing, you're doing this all the time. Like, it's a full-time job, and when you're not working the actual job, you're thinking about it, and you're thinking about ways to make it better. And so when you let somebody else in, it's really hard because they're often not thinking about it 24-7 the same way you are. So, like, when you actually get those people that are on the same page with you is really tight. And especially when you've been doing it for a while, like you have to where it's like you've had people come in and out of your life. It, you touched on it in such a great way on What's Up. Uh -huh. When you were talking about like, you know, I lost this person, but I still kept a friend. I lost that person, but I still kept a friend. Like, it's honestly incredible to lose people that you work with and still remain friends with them. Yeah. What was it like, not only writing about that, but just having that happen in your life because that's very rare and any time that i said some stupid shit it was probably just insecurity but watching business ruin friendships is absurd to me i probably still got too much pride to say it perfectly but jealousy is different than hate i'm still working see i lost my manager but kept my friend lost my cameraman but kept my friend yeah i think it's really important because that's not to say that I've succeeded with everybody. No, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's definitely been people, friendships that I've lost mm -hmm. over this stuff. And so that's where I think it came from. Is Because also I talk about that on that song, too, right before that. Is I, I kind of mentioned a, a relationship with somebody that I lost through this. Um, and I think it's just, yeah, like appreciating that, like, they're, like I really like these people in my life, mm -hmm. even if they're not, like... DJing for me, making videos for me, mm -hmm. making beats for me, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there's a reason I keep the people around. Like, if you see, if you see a name like pop up for me two times, like whether it's on my social media or at a show or et cetera, et cetera. If you see someone's name pop up like two, three times, like it means I really like this person, and I would probably like introduce them to my parents. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. these people have slept on like my parents' couches. Speaking of working with people, what was it like getting these features and these producers on this project? It was really cool. It was a really cool process. Like, because um, it's, it's a mix of people I've worked with a lot mm -hmm. and then a mix of new people. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, um, it was really cool having that base, like always having that foundation of the people that you know are like, these are, this is my core team. Like when I work with Space Cadet, when I work with Beegis, it's like a very, it feels like our team, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but then it's also really important and something that I was trying to do more of on this project is to reach out and experiment a little bit more and touch different things that I haven't touched before and work with people I haven't worked with before. So that was really cool to get to the, the opportunity to, uh, you know, go on some beats that, uh, by producers I had never worked with before or make songs with artists that I had never made songs with before that brought their own piece to the puzzle, you know. I'm probably going to pronounce her name wrong. Kienzi, Kienzi, 
KNC. KNC. Yeah. I would like to start a petition right now <laughs> for you guys to do a whole project together. Wow. Because I first found her at one of your shows, I believe. Uh huh. She came up and performed, and I was like, oh, because you guys did a song. Yeah, we did before. a song on the last album. So yeah. Oh. That's her who sings that song. So then I followed her on Twitter, and then she's on this project, and I love that song. And I'm like, if you guys did a full project together, like, Yeah, she's man. super dope. Super dope. She's so good. Yeah, she's got some stuff. Like, I've heard some of her other music. Yes. And, uh, yeah, it's just awesome working with her. Like, I drove down to L.A. to make that happen, and then she also had, is, like, on a couple other songs just in the background. But she's, like, a super cool person to work with. And she wrote her whole part and everything. Like, she's a super good songwriter, everything. Told you, she's super talented. <laughs> it's crazy. I love it. Yeah. If people have never heard Jay Lately before, they download this project, and they're like, all right, I just want to start with one song from him, what would be the first song that you recommend? You know, if I had to just play one song off this project to really, like, get across what this project is about and what I'm about, I think I'll play uh, the second song on the project, which is called Losing Me. Feeling like I'm on my own, but, but fuck it about time that I grow up. Realize it's weird, cause all these people don't owe me shit. It shouldn't feel like shit when they show love. Shit, I love you, I'm not scared to say it. My girl is sick, that's just paraphrasing. My parents amazing, still rocking today. Shit, my life is a bitch on opposite day. I need. And I think that really touches on kind of like the whole, my, me, my whole mental state while I was writing this project and where it really came from. Um, and then I also think it's really cool because it's produced by Space Cadet. It, it's like an evolution of my sound. Like, it's very much my sound, but it's, it's growing with it. Um, and, yeah, I think it's just my favorite song on the album, probably. You it's know, a good one. It's one of the more honest uh Honest ones, I think. I'm telling you, man, you bared your soul. <laughs> I'm like, because if you go back to um, the project before last, let's just be friends, had so much honesty on it too. But it yeah. almost feels like a different kind of honesty from this one. So it's like you can really feel your evolution not only as a person but also as an artist taking us with you on this journey that you're on as a human being. I felt like that. Let's just be friends. One was like me getting in touch with my emotions, mm -hmm. but just the like dark, depressed emotions, and then this one is, like, me getting in touch with all of them a little <laughs> bit more, kind of, like, being multifaceted with it a little bit. Yeah, and even, you know, going back to the title, how you were saying, like, be fucking happy to where it's like, yeah, this is going on, this is going on, but look at this, because this is good, and the album does such a good job of being like, hey, I hate this, this sucks, I feel like this, but hey, you have, you know what I mean, you talk about, you have a dope girlfriend, you have dope people in your life, yeah. your career is going cool, like, you get to tour, you get to do all these cool things, so it's just a real, like, focusing exercise to be like, hey, this is going on, but look at this. Be fucking happy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's one of those things that I, like, ask myself all the time when I'm feeling down. I'm like, why can't I just be happy? You know what I mean? Like, look at all this. Like, what's wrong with me? And, and I think part of it is just, like, learning to appreciate it, you know? Mm -hmm. Believe me, we all do. Like, literally, <laughs> that's, like, the thing is, like, this is great and that's great. Why the fuck aren't yeah, I happy? I feel like, like such an asshole sometimes. No, you know what I'm but saying? it's so <laughs> real. I think so many people struggle with that to where it's like, wow, this is going great. Why don't I feel great? Or why can't, you know what I mean? I yeah. just focus on these things. Anything else you want to say about Be Fucking Happy? Go stream that. Mm -hmm. Go share it with a friend. Go play it on repeat. Um, tweet about it. Facebook about it. You know, just... Play it super loud out of your car windows and tell people what you're listening to. And, yeah, just play a lot of it. Smoke a lot of weed and listen to it. And uh, be fucking happy. Friday, the project comes out. The <coughs> listening party at Oaklandish, 7 to 10 p.m. in Oakland. I'm yeah. really excited about that. That's going to be a good time. Yeah, I'm excited, too. Free, all ages. DJ Nocturnal is going to be spinning. We're going to play the project. Got giveaways, raffles. Shout out to the homie Knock. That's that's the homie homie. Yeah. That's, that's a good guy. So yeah, make sure you guys are there on Friday. The Be fucking happy album listening party. And then, you know, buy it on iTunes, stream it, make sure you get it in your life. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. No problem. Appreciate it.